Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. What I have for you today is a mission that's called Call and They Will Come by Firebird Gaming. The American Admiralty is eager to see how their new fleet of treaty battleships and modernized super dreadnoughts stands up on the world stage. In order to do this, they call on an old ally. One who just happens to have the largest navy in the world and who's happy to participate. This leads to a friendly and slightly passionate debate which ends with admirals of both navies going at each other's throats over issues of strategy. You and your contemporary fleet commander on the other side realize that things will get nasty if you don't do something quick. And that actions speak louder than words. And so both battle groups sneak out in broad daylight to conduct a naval exercise and settle the debate once and for all. There are many issues on the table. Some include battleships or battle cruisers. Are torpedo launchers worth ditching larger caliber secondaries for? Uh, do you want more guns in your secondaries? Or sorry, do you want more guns in your turrets or more turrets on your ship? How important really are super firing guns or the ability to get all your guns on a target at once? And can battleships defend themselves against all types of ships, especially nasty torpedo armed ones without needing an escort? Since these are just as relevant issues in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts as they are in the 1930s, you shall pick a side, either UK or US, and design a battleship to reflect your design principles. Starting distance is completely up to you, but it may not be below the detection range of your ship. So for that I have set a starting range of 15,000 meters. The UK tech level is going to be 1936, the USA tech level will be 1939. Your battleship is limited to 45,000 tons and 14-inch guns. If this creates a crappy two-turret pre-dreadnought that looks like shit, your displacement can be 65,000 tons and 16-inch guns. Try to keep your design and appearance somewhat historical, but don't hesitate to grab the best tech available. Now, the two fleets should be identical replicas of each other, except if you're playing as the USA. The British fleet has two more of each type of ship than you, and if you play as the UK, the enemy fleet has one ship less per type than you. The exact fleet composition is up to you, but each fleet must consist of, or sorry, must contain at least one capital ship and two escorts. These are the best fleets both navies can offer. So bigger is better. Think of British Grand Fleet or the US Atlantic Fleet. So long as the AI, uh, and I think he means my processor, doesn't have a seizure. I will also be posting this to the History Guys gaming channel, so I look forward to seeing how each of you address the problem at hand. Now he's also come up with kill-death ratio and uh, success parameters for the mission. Uh, I really like this, when people do this. It creates a more complex scenario, but it also makes it more interesting for me, because it's, um, it's more complex than just sink every enemy or... Uh, just make sure your transports survive or whatever. A kill-death ratio of more than one means that I've proven my might and cemented my next promotion. A kill-death ratio of more than two will be a major public and technological victory for the either UK, US or UK Navy and might even convince the Congress or Parliament to give you funding for a new class of super dreadnought. Uh, and that might appear in a follow-up mission. So he already has plans for the next one as well as dethroning the Royal Navy for the record of best crews and most powerful warships. Now, he has written this in the sense that I can be either the UK or the US, and I've decided to go for the UK, which means I'll have a slight tech disadvantage, but I will have more ships. Um, I think that's a bit too much, because if I approach with, let's say, four battleships versus the American two, um, not even their their tech advantage of three years is really going to save them. Each side must contain at least one capital ship and two escorts. Alright, I'm going to go with one battleship for each side. Uh, I'll give them two battle cruisers, a couple of heavies, and six destroyers. Now, he does say that the British fleet... Uh, hold on. If you are... Uh, the, the two fleets must be identical. If you play as the UK, the enemy fleet has one less ship per type than you. Okay. Well, they cannot have less than one battleship. So let's just up this to two for the British. Um, 
I'll give the British three battle cruisers then, five heavies and seven destroyers. I don't think this is as fair. Because the AI might have the tech advantage, the US. But I am vastly better, well, most of the time, at managing my ships than the AI is. Um, I'm going to go with an even fleet. And we'll see how it goes. All right, let's design a ship. I'm going to design the battleship. And as he said, you need to come up with Hans' 14-inch gun ship. Which means something like a Dreadnought 3. This is 1936 for the British, after all, so it's not going to be terribly advanced. Um, starting with gear turbines, oil, forced boilers, auxiliary engine shafts. I can take the advanced stuff, as he mentioned it, so I will happily do that. Anti-torpedo, reinforced bulkheads, anti-flooding, uh, turtlebacks, heavy shells, increased ammo... ITT, torpedoes maybe, generation 2 radar, RDF, maximum rangefinder, electrohydraulic turrets, and auto loaders. Okay, so that's the basis set up. Now, for the tower, I think a modern tower on a British battleship? Well, I suppose it's possible. Uh, how am I going to fit everything, though? Hold on. I don't need a huge, I think I need a standard. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Now, 14 inch guns. Um, I have had quite a few people going off about the range. People saying, oh, come on, very short range is not accurate. People saying, oh, very long range means that you're losing out on displacement. Fine, I'll switch to medium. Um, I'm getting the similar kind of discussions with dual barrel turrets or triple barrel turrets. And this is getting annoying because I'm fucked if I do, fucked if I don't. People are saying, oh no, you cannot have dual barrel because triple barrel is more advanced and it gives you more shells. And then there's the other side of the equation where people are saying, oh no, you cannot have triple barrels because it's so monotonous and everybody's doing it, so switch to the dual barrels. Well, fuck you guys, I'm going to have to make a choice and half of you is not going to like it, so I'm just going to do what I want. And I'll use dual barrels. Now, my plan is to use these dual barrels and set up another secondary up here, which will hopefully allow my ship to defend itself against different types of ships a little better. So, destroyers and cruisers. I can go with the 7 inch or the 8 inch. They both have the same type of um, classification, they're both the Mark IVs. Let's see, if I go for a standard barbette, that might already be tall enough. This one is just 50 tons heavier. 60 tons heavier, even. Alright, so let's go with an 8-inch triple barrel. This way I can fire over all the rest of the turrets. And then ideally, I would also have these turrets over here. Now... One of the design decisions, as Firebird said it, is how are you going to put your ships, or how are you going to uh, make sure that your ships can defend themselves against different types of ships? How are you going to make sure that your battleships actually survive? In my case, this is going to be my solution. Having uh, my 8-inch secondaries, which can defend against cruisers and destroyers, and having my 14-inch guns, which can punch fairly large holes in battleships. Sure enough, the American uh, auto-generated fleet might go with something completely different. But that is something that I have absolutely no control over. So fussing over it is not going to be of any use. Now I will try to actually get another one of these setups here. And if I can fit all that... And that should give me a pretty nice firepower against any type of ship. Rotate it the wrong way. There. Uh, for those of you who have commented, yes, I am trying to use the R and T buttons instead of just going for one or the other and rotating the turret all the way through. Now, I'm not sure exactly why I have the starboard weight offset, but I think it's to do with these guns here.
So this one. No, don't move. There, now we're balanced. And I'll have the same setup over here, but just pointing in reverse. Over there. Try to pick this one up, don't move it. Swing it back. All right, I can go to 45,000 tons. So with this, I can still add quite a lot of armor. Oh, haha, <laughs> nice setup. Forgot something, secondary tower. Where am I gonna fit all that? Oh, the secondary barbette is attached. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing, but sure. Uh, this is way, way, way too big. The base accuracy is so much better though. This is six and a half. This is 15. But if I add all of this, then I don't have any sort of chance of having the same sort of setup on the back. And on top of that, what can you put in those slots? Is that casemate or secondary? Yeah, it's secondaries. Or is it? No, it's not. You cannot put four inch in there anyway. You can't put anything in there. Two inch? Nope. I can put two inch up there though. That's not really what I'm going for. Right, so I'll have to try and slide these things even farther forward. Nah, I can't. I can't. The problem lies in the barbette. It is just stuck. So I'll have to try and move this thing slightly farther forward, making a bit more room for the secondary tower. Uh, this is, yeah. Base accuracy is very important for my battleship. But over here, I would just have zero room whatsoever. If I go for a modern secondary tower like this, I'll have the same problem. It's just too much room. So I really don't like it, but if I want to maintain any sort of semblance of having the ship balanced bow and aft and having weapon systems against everything, then I think that this might be my better option. Oh, hold on, my four weight offset's too bad. I need to shift it back, not forward. There we go, 0.8. Uh, 0 0.6. And I still need funnels. How much engine efficiency am I currently getting? 100. Could have been a lot worse. Okay, 42,000 tons used. Some guns have poor fields of fire, really. Are you going to enlighten me on which ones those are, or are you just going to go silent? Yeah, the game's just going to go silent. All right. Really? That actually fits without causing too much weight displacement? That's fantastic. It gives me a lot of these guns. Uh, let's remove this one. Just put it down again. Switch here. Port weight offset, 1.7%. Yeah, it was that one. No, don't move. Ah, oh, damn it. It moved again. I do want those 8-inch because they're just the best guns that I can field. Their reload isn't fantastic, but their accuracy is just a lot better overall at all ranges than the 6-inch guns are. The challenge is picking up this turret and not having any shift. There we go. After weight offset 2.6. That's easily fixable. 0 0.5. Perfect. Torpedoes are not going to be found on this ship because I have my destroyers for that. Right then. Time to look at uh, displacement and speed. What's my design philosophy for this particular British battleship? I think the British are not that likely to run. 
So using a lot of speed, not terribly lightly. It's at 27 knots. Now the problem is I have used so much displacement already that I think my armor is going to be lacking. Unless, unless I use a little bit less anti-flooding. I have quite a few destroyers around me, so hopefully they'll spot the torpedoes and allow my battleship, the uh, Neptune, to still evade. Alright, turrets are good. Let's go for more conning tower armor. Let's just put that at 15. I think belt armor can go higher. Belt extended is going to be important. Because last time around, or a couple videos ago, I... Well, I skimmed on this a bit. And then a torpedo went, haha, nice Bismarck you got there. Shame if something happened to it. Right. So this is the plan. The Neptune. Um, length, 662 inches. What's that in normal metrics? Uh, 201.8 meters. Beam, 31.7 Draft, 16.7 meters. Displacement, 45,474 tons. Armament, 4 times 2, 35.6 centimeter guns. <clears throat> Belt, 30.5 uh, 30 centimeters. And propulsion, 108,472 horsepower. Top speed, 27 knots. Let's take her to fight. I really wonder what sort of heavy cruisers I'm going to be getting. Destroyers. Um, I'm not generally a big fan of battle cruisers, especially not when they're generated by the AI, because the AI has this really weird tendency to put tons and tons of speed on their battle cruisers, which generally doesn't make too much sense. All right, here's the battle cruiser, the Furious. Thirty-five knots. Wow, it actually is respectful or respectable. Triple inch, um, or sorry, triple barrel. Let's go back to uh, millimeter inches. Uh, what is that? 15, in <laughs> 15 inch guns. The battle cruisers have bigger guns than my battleship. Uh, torpedo tubes out to a range of 21.8 with less torpedo visibility. This could be a very, very useful ally. Arguably, she has more firepower than my ship. But she has few bulkheads and not a lot of armor. So she's just one big accident waiting to happen. Heavy cruisers, Suffolk, Hampshire, Bedford and Blake. Armed with 8-inch guns. Firing out a range of 15-3. 4-inch guns. All the secondaries, 2-inch guns. And torpedo tubes out to a range of 12.9. But with far less torpedo visibility. And only a couple on the bow. Two tubes per. Alright, let's disable those. Because I've had accidents with those before, where torpedoes ended up hitting the launching ship. Destroyers, Cossack, Huon, uh, Ure, Lookout, Medway, and Tourmalin. Torpedoes out to a range of 13 clicks. Debris visibility minus 68%. I can get around that. I like that. And besides the Furious, we also have the Monarch. Okay, what's the alignment of the American fleet? They're heading the opposite direction. Those look like really, really big guns. That's at least 17 inch and potentially 18 inch. I gotta be really careful with these. But the question is, is that a battleship or was that a battle cruiser? This looks like Let's say a more normal battleship. 15, 16 inch guns, maybe? So that makes this one and that one the battle cruisers. Okay. Uh, a destroyer with all the funnels, torpedo tubes, and what seems to be 5 inch gun turrets. And then you still have heavy cruisers somewhere. Whoa. How many turrets would you like on your ship? Well, yes. <laughs> this thing has a broadside of 21 guns. 
Sweet. That's a really nice design. I'm not sure exactly how well protected it's going to be, but I guess we're about to find out. Alright, how do I want my fleet positioned? Because we're all heading in the wrong direction of sorts. I want to try and trail the American fleet, so I want to make a big turn that way. Um, and since I just don't trust the AI to be making well, reasonable decisions as far as maneuvers go, I'll just do this manually. Neptune, start turning to port, slow down to your speed of 22 knots. The heavy cruisers, I want you to be shielding for the Monarch, so screen. And the Monarch is going to slow down to 28 knots, so you guys are going to do the same thing. I don't really want to have them all 24 knots. Okay, let's do 28 knots. I know it's a little bit unfortunate for the heavies, but the battle cruisers rely on their speed to survive. Then, all the destroyers. I want those between myself and the enemy fleet. Let's go. Until we know exactly what kind of armor scheme these guys have, let's switch to high explosive. Primary targets? Those floating citadels. The battle cruisers. The battle cruisers look like they just opened fire. Furious seems to be the focal point of their attack at the moment. She also has a bunch of 8 inch. 1, 2, 3, 4. Nice. 5. So she has 15. 8 inch guns. Holy. Look at all that fire going out. Oh my. And it looks like the secondaries are working their way through a destroyer. Oh yes. That's what I want to see. Destroyer already hit. Hopefully before it's able to get our torpedoes away. But if not now, then <laughs> soon. Because very, very soon there's going to be another one of those big salvos come in. I think this is it. Right here. And I hope to neutralize the battle cruiser and the destroyers early. That's the plan. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. She's flooding like crazy. First blood to the British. The Royal Navy strikes again. Alright, Neptune, secondaries on that. Uh, Battlecruiser, secondaries on the destroyer. Are you guys alright? Oh, no, 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 we're not alright. Furious has been hit severely. And right now, I'm starting to really notice that lack of armor. Not just that, but also a lack of bulkheads. They may have lost the destroyer, but I'm on my way to losing a battlecruiser. Switch to auto. Because if their battlecruisers are as soft as mine, I should have no problems punching big holes in them. Uh, where are my destroyers? Still over there. The other DDs? Push to right, set a smoke screen. There's only so much I can actively manage at one given time. That's the battleship, I think. I'm going to try and keep at range of these guys until I figure out exactly what the range of those torpedoes is. For now, the destroyers are all mingled between the first of the fleet. So, they probably don't dare launch torpedoes. Although, in case of the AI, it wouldn't be the first time that I've seen them make crazy design decisions and crazy tactics. And just launch their torpedoes right in the middle of a fight. From the middle of a formation, of course. Good hit. Rudder damaged and flooding. Neptune is currently working away on <laughs> a warship. Which seems to be the battle cruiser. Destroyer is having a bad day. Bingo. Two destroyers down. Now I gotta keep an eye on who I have sunk and what I have lost. Because if my kill death ratio is better or worse, then uh, that is going to determine the outcome of the battle. 
So, uh, we have the battle ships, we have the battle cruisers, we have the heavy cruisers, and we have the DDs, and I'm actually doing this on pen and paper. Um, what is going on? That I have sunk two destroyers. And as of right now, I haven't lost a ship yet. But it's going to come down to the damage control parties and the Furious to see how long that situation is going to be true. I'm thinking that she's... No. She's not looking good. Okay, torpedoes... Oh, whoa, no! That's not torpedoes away. That's torpedoes incoming. Who on? Turn away. Uh, Hampshire, start turning away. This is going to turn into a shitstorm. Wait, one. Hampshire, disengage from the division. Turn directly into the torpedoes. Bedford. Uh, disengage. Turn away. Blake, join the group of the Bedford. The rest of the DDs, these, are still trying to get out of range. Or, well, out of the division. Let's just detach them and send them into combat one by one. What are you guys doing here? Neptune, maintain course. Furious seems to take another full volley of incoming. Oh, flooding. Yeah, she's done. This is why I do not like battle cruisers. Unless... Yeah, there she goes. Hold on, no, that was the Huan. That was the DD. Yeah, sunk by the, the, the torpedoes. Okay, so I have lost one destroyer. Is that battleship? No. Oh god, that's one of those super gun cruisers. Uh, Cossack. Torpedo aggressively. Because you have quite a few of them, I believe. Alright, you have just, what, one five, one quintuple. Okay. It's not terrible, but I was hoping to find two quintuple launchers over there. Just send it. Because if you don't hit this one, you might still hit something else. Cossack. Uh-oh. Yeah, there goes Furious. So I've also lost a battle cruiser. Okay. It's nice that these scenarios are getting more complex, but it's also uh, undermining my ability to f both measure how many kills and losses I've gotten and manage the battle at the same time. Hampshire, Suffolk, uh, Bedford, turn to port. Hampshire turned to port. Suffolk turned to port. The rest of the DDs are now steaming through. Oh, shit. Those torpedoes could have finished the Metway. Monarch's firing. Come on, we need to put down one of their heavies. So far, we've inflicted decent damage against one destroyer here. And the battle cruiser's taken a bit of a beating. This one's almost down. Secondaries on that. And secondaries on that. Though I'm not sure if they can actually hit out that far. Yeah, they can. They can. The battleship is almost identified. <clears throat> and I'm really hoping that my destroyers can make short work of him. Because he's not getting... Or her. Because she's not getting a lot of escort. So that's the plan. Cossack has launched her torpedoes. Turn around. Suffolk, continue your turn and join the Hampshire. Which is group 6. Hampshire, continue on course. Two double cruiser divisions. I want all the cruisers to engage that incoming cruiser with all the guns on it. Okay. That's good. The destroyer looks to be racing to the sea bottom very soon. Depending just on how many bulkheads she has. 
probably not enough. Now the Neptune is still in perfect condition. And I really like that setup with the 8 inch guns. Right now no more torpedoes have been spotted. Cossack turn around. You're getting too close. And your smoke screen just ran out. Where are the torpedoes from the Cossack? What did I eventually end up using those against? The battleship. Oh! Hold on. Light cruiser, so that's probably a destroyer. Uh, yeah, that's... Two more destroyers sunk on the US side. So there's one... No, two more destroyers left. Here's one. There's the other. Okay, now we can finally see what the U.S. have. They have the Battlecruiser North Carolina with 14-inch guns. 14-inch? Look like a hell of a lot bigger to me. Torpedoes, 8.3 clicks. This one's still being identified. Uh, we still don't know much about the other guys. 7-inch guns. Loads and loads and loads of them. Many bulkheads. Armor. Pretty substantial for a heavy cruiser at 14.4 inch. That's more armor than the battle cruiser. Not the first time that I've seen that. Oh crap, Monarch. Monarch, I want you to sort of disengage, but keep your guns in the fight. Keep close. Cossack's probably gonna go down. There goes the Cossack. So the Americans have sunk another one of my DDs. That means I lost two. Neptune. You're getting a bit too far away from the conflict. We need to sink the Charlotte before the Charlotte's going to take down my heavies. Because my heavies have 8-inch guns. She has 7, but she has a lot more of them. DDs, smoke up. Looks like the, uh, the torpedoes never actually arrived at the Louisiana. Aggressive launch, target Louisiana. The heavies, all, sorry, the, yeah, the heavy cruisers also have torpedoes, add to a range of 12-9. Uh, normal. Hampshire, normal torpedo launch, target Louisiana. If this heavy cruiser doesn't die, then I'm going to have a really hard time actually getting my destroyers close enough. So far she's just shrugging off everything that hits her. Uh-oh. Can we still get torpedoes off against the uh, Charlotte? Before you sink, look out. Torpedo launch from the Bedford. Very good. I'm getting quite close to that battleship, though. 6.4 only. Hold on. I might just need to hand-deliver these torpedoes. Charlotte has been put on fire, and she's now starting to receive some damaging hits. Monarch has fought off the flooding, but she's still burning. Neptune. Neptune seems to be perfectly fine. But she hasn't been focused yet. Whereas the destroyers have. It looks like the lookout is going to be looking out from the bottom of the sea. Dead. I'm a dead nation. Okay, I lost another one. But so far they lost four destroyers, I lost three. Suffolk, what are you doing? You're supposed to follow the Hampshire, not go off on some sort of merry chase. Oh, hold on. Can I finish this guy off? North Carolina. North Carolina, many bulkheads, though. Um, pretty far off the reservation, anyway. Let's see if I can get your torpedoes away, Suffolk. Torpedoes away from the port side. Make a turn to port. And try and get her regrouped with the rest. 
Ure, aggressive torpedo launch versus Washington. I'm sure it's going to be dead. Because I'm doing a bad job today at managing my ships. Is that ship out of the question, though? Maybe I can... Oh, no, 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 where are you going? No, 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 no. Come here. I really need to get stuck in with the battleship. Monarch, turn around. Those 15 inch guns are too valuable to lose at this point. Ure is gonna go down. Which means that my chances of sinking any. Oh, there goes a heavy cruiser. Uh, my chances of sinking their ships using torpedoes are pretty much negligible at this point. Ure is gonna go down as well. Yep, she's dead. Four destroyers sunk on each side. And the Charlotte is just not... Oh. The Charlotte is uh, not taking any hits. As opposed to the Bedford, which just got a couple of big hits from the battleship guns from the Louisiana. Um, I did have torpedoes in the water at some point. Yeah, here they are. Minimum bulkheads on the Louisiana? Oh. I like that. She has detected the torpedoes, but can you turn 51,900 tons out of the way in time? I kind of doubt that. That means that she's going to take a lot of flooding. Unless she just sped up. I think the torpedo is too slow. No, she won't hit. Tourmaline. Why are my destroyers not launching their torpedoes? What is going on? They are definitely in range. They have a range of 13 clicks. So go on. Your torpedo tube has been destroyed or something. No, they haven't. So, what's your excuse? At this point, I don't care who you torpedo, just send them out. Before there's no ship left. There we go, torpedoes away. Finally. Uh, send against Columbus. Not send against Tulsa. Torpedoes away, Tourmaline, fall back. Neptune. What can we pretty easily sink? Still looking at the North Carolina as an interesting snack. Battle cruiser. Suffolk is getting very close at the moment to the Charlotte. Bedford and Blake are falling back. I think that this is going to go to the Americans. Small hit. There goes the Bedford. So I just lost another heavy cruiser. Right now, I've lost seven ships versus the American four ships. Or oh, hold on, have they lost a heavy cruiser? I don't think they have. I started out with four heavy cruisers and so did they. Outbound torpedoes. Louisiana is still perfectly healthy. Guys, fall back. Increase speed to flank. Make yourself as difficult to hit as possible. Metway out of here. Ooh, good hits. Against North Carolina. North Carolina reloads in 34 seconds. That's uh, pretty good. I think that my guns are not quite up to the job of penning that armor. Those 14 inches. Well, they should be... Oh, there we go. Yeah, definitely. Destroyed a main gun. She just lost her A turret.
Any luck with these torpedoes? It's not looking like it. Neptune, switch fire with the, he the secondaries, so the 8-inch. Switch target to the battle cruiser here. Metway, evade the Neptune. Shit, there goes Metway. That's five of my DDs dead. Now, on the one hand, I'm playing really poorly with my ships. On the other hand, I feel like the AI got a couple of better ships. So there are two things at work here. Uh, you're trying to hit the battle cruiser. No, 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 no. Hit the Tulsa. If you can. She's still flooding. A torpedo hit you? Damn it. North Carolina is still refusing to go down. And look at how little damage the Charlotte has actually taken. That's from peppering it with 8-inch guns. Or was it 6-inch? 8-inch guns. She just doesn't care. But that's, I suppose, what you get when you put 14.4 inches of armor on a battle... No, on a heavy cruiser. 20.4 inches of armor? Yeah, right. Um, right, so the status for the Brits is that the Neptune is doing fairly well. The Monarch has taken flooding, has lost both or two engines, and has uh, her damaged rudder. We have torpedoes coming in every which way from the surviving ships here. The Blake is doing quite all right. So is the Suffolk. They are in retreat, but they're not able to do any kind of respectable damage against the heavy cruisers. They're being chased down by the Louisiana. And they're not quite able to do anything against it. I still have one destroyer, the Tourmaline. She's reloading her torpedo tubes. And I'm not really holding my breath as to how effective she's going to be. Looks like the Columbus launched a torpedo. Let's change course. The guns on these ships are just not quite capable of penning whatever I'm trying to hit. So for the heavy cruisers, I've switched to HE to try and burn the Tulsa down. Or at least inflict some actual damage on her. But they still have a destroyer or two. A battle cruiser at full health. The North Carolina at half health. A full health uh, heavy cruiser. Yeah, this is not going to go well for the British. Oh, flooding. 15-inch shells from the battleship. So that was the Louisiana, firing all the way from over there. Hitting the Neptune and causing flooding. And, more importantly, damaging an engine. There goes the Tourmaline. That's my sixth destroyer down, and that's all the destroyers down. Because she got torpedoed by a heavy cruiser. I'm thinking that my destroyers did not have hydro. No hydro, no sonar, nada. And because of that, they were just not able to do anything useful. Yeah, this fight's over. Neptune's severely damaged. And I don't see any reasonable way of trying to disengage with her. Um, that means that the Americans are just going to snowball these ships. Because first it's going to be Neptune. Look at that. And then goes the Monarch, probably, or the Heavy Cruisers. The Monarch is still trying to defend itself. But... These Heavy Cruisers are just shrugging off whatever you throw at them. There we are. Flooding hit. 8 inch... No, 15 inch from the Battle Cruiser, hitting the Tulsa. Finally, some damaging hits. There goes Monarch. That's the other Battle Cruiser sunk. And that was due to, in good fashion of battlecruisers, an ammo detonation for 6,500 damage. So yeah, I suppose I can end this one here. Um, 
The British absolutely got their asses handed to them by the Americans. It's just no dispute whatsoever because the battleship is still alive. It hasn't even been hit once. And... There's just nothing that I can do to salvage this mission. So, Firebird Gaming. Interesting scenario. Maybe I should have gone with additional units for the British. But even then, I'm not sure if that would have really mattered. I made a lot of mistakes in this battle. Um, I also got handed a couple of bad ships. So, yes, I will take responsibility for my own failure. But uh, also, giving the AI ships like this... With 21 7-inch guns and just 14 inches of armor. And giving me ships which have a little less than 9 inches of armor and a few bulkheads and 8-inch guns. It's not helpful. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not helpful. So I'll hand this one to the Americans. Um, and since the kill-death conditions are, well, let's just say not very fortunate. Because I have definitely lost more than one ship for every one that I have killed. Um, I suppose that I am not going to be getting my promotion. Uh, in fact, I might be removed from command. Seeing how poorly I performed during this whole operation. Now, if you have a good scenario for a future uh, video, by all means, let me know down below in the comment section. I know that some of you might be getting really frustrated. Because you've posted your scenario there five, six, seven, eight times. And it's still not getting traction. Um, I'm sorry to see that happen. But the way that this works is that I select the scenario with the most upvotes. So try to make your scenario more appealing. Try to refine it further. Try to farm those upvotes. Try to get attention for it. Give it an interesting name. Give it an interesting, uh, let's say, thumbnail. An interesting teaser text. Because usually the comments allow you to read the first two or three lines. Uh, so don't waste the first two or three lines on saying, Hey Stealth, I got an interesting scenario for you. Because that's a waste. Give it an interesting mission title. Give it an interesting scenario. And that is your best way of getting more attention for your scenario. Thus, more upvotes. And with that, more likeliness of me turning it into a video. Anyway, I am very interested if History Gamer is also going to be picking up this scenario. And how well he's going to do. So um, I'll check his channel, see if he has anything up, and if he does, I'll link to him. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the fight, and I shall catch you guys soon for the next video.